Hello everyone, welcome to Off the Water. Today I want to talk to y'all about finesse fishing on the upper Texas Gulf Coast, Galveston to be exact. There are a lot of marsh systems in our area and I just want to share with y'all what has made me successful in being able to go out there and target redfish on finesse fishing gear. So I'm going to put the hat on and let's jump right into it. Let's start off by first talking about finesse fishing and what it means because it's basically subjective to whoever you ask. Some people may not even use something that's lower than a medium powered rod, whether it's going to be spinning or a bait casting setup, a fishing reel. Some of y'all haven't even heard of a 500 series spinning reel. The most commonly used one is going to be about a, a 2500 and on the bait casting side well you've got all types of reels this one right here is a shimano calcutta conquest 100 usually like your 100 series bait casters and like a 50 series those can like they're suited perfectly for finesse style fishing and in order to i mean you can use both of these reels for like practical applications, but I mean, they're really well suited towards the finesse style. Now, what makes a finesse fishing setup is gonna be the rods and then the line, everything all in combination with each other. So to give you an idea, this right here is not your ordinary bait casting rod. Uh, again, the lightest that the majority of the big box stores or brands sell these in or make them in is going to be a medium light. Uh, you'd be hard pressed to find something that's light action or ultra light in a casting rod. Now I'm not saying that they're not out there but you, it's going to be very hard to actually go to a department store or go online to one of the retailers and find something that is light action or ultra light action in the casting. Now on the spinning side there are a dime a dozen. You can get you a light spinning reel or spinning rod and then an ultra light spinning rod. So it's not uncommon for the uh, average or typical finesse fisherman to be able to go to a, an ultra light setup on this end of the spectrum. So we're not really going to concentrate on this, but to give you an idea of what I consider to be Finesse style fishing is going to be a 500 series spinning reel. This thing is super tiny. When you compare it to a 2500 series spinning reel, this thing just it is just so tiny. There's no other way to explain it. Uh, I only have enough room for, it's about 80 to 90 yards of 5 pound braid. This is Power Pro. It's the brand that I've come to trust and use for the past four years. It's made me successful as a fishing YouTuber. And I, for my leader line, because we deal with a lot of oyster on the Texas Gulf Coast in the marsh uh, style setting, you got to use something that's very abrasion resistant. So Seaguar Invisix 12 pound is the happy medium. Uh, you can connect your leader line to the main line of braid by way of a uni to uni. Now, a lot of y'all are probably thinking to yourself, nope, the FG knot is the best way to go. Uh, I can get away with this style of knot. It's easier to tie. I can do it with my eyes closed just because I've done it over and over again. But that's indicative to like how easy it is to tie. Now, why can I get away with such a big knot? It's because the line that I'm using is super thin. So the knot itself is not going, I wish I had a, a black background. Let's see if I can find something so that you can truly get a feel for how small this knot is and the fishing line as well. All right, so let's set this down right here, move our other rod out of the way before it falls over. Actually, it's pretty good right there. Okay, so here we go. Hopefully y'all are gonna be able to see this right there, this knot, is super small. It's not going to have an issue going through the guides. Now, if I was using, let's say, 30 pound, 40 pound braid, and then a 20 pound or higher fluorocarbon leader, that knot is going to be significantly thicker and bigger. And then you're going to have trouble with it passing through the guides. 
it's gonna slow down your lure whenever it takes off. You're gonna lose distance on the cast. So I can get away with this knot and the two diameter sizes of line that I'm using. Now, why do we need to use such small line and leader line is because we're casting lures that are super tiny. These things are tied like flies and you fish them with conventional gear. That's the way they were designed. It's a lure company that is here in Texas called Bugs Fishing. They've got phenomenal leaders that are fished, again, like flies, but designed for conventional gear. And boy, oh boy, do they really work out there in the marsh. I have a plethora of videos, over 600 plus, using these lures right here to catch really big redfish. And uh, you can, if you're curious to, you know, some of those fishing trips and some of the fish, the caliber of fish that we're catching on my fishing channel, it's gonna be linked in the video description down below. So highly recommend checking it out and you can see all of these things in action. Now the reason why we are using finesse gear is because I'm primarily trying to sight cast redfish out there in the marsh. And when doing that, it's such an intimate setting because it's quiet back there. The marsh grass and everything else, the narrow bayous and ditches, the back lakes, it's all skinny water. It's all sheltered from the wind. And if you make noise with traditional style big lures, chances are you're gonna spook the fish whenever that lure hits the water. I'm not gonna say that you can't catch them. You can, but more often than not, when you present them a big lure, it's gonna make a lot of noise. It will spook them and then off they go. So what I have learned to do is downsize to lures like all of these up here, very light in weight, 3 16 a quarter ounce is usually the highest that I'm going to go, but uh, I'll use anything from 1 16 to 1 8 3 16 and then the quarter, and all of these style lures. And then whenever you go into regular conventional style paddle tails and stuff like that, we've got some 4 inch style like jerk baits that are soft plastic we've got right here some three inch ones a little bit smaller and uh, i'm traditionally or not traditionally i'm usually throwing something that is very small in size now these right here the salt natives these uh skelly swims uh, it's a traditional like style almost traditional it's three and a half inches long but it's on the heavier side of what I'm gonna throw out there. But I can still make it happen with my ultralight setups. But again, that's gonna be on the bigger side of things. More often than not, you're gonna see me throw something that's well suited for the Texas Marsh. And these guys are usually always gonna get the call. These guys over here can definitely get it done. These paddle tails are phenomenal. They're three and a half inches, the 10,000 fish shimmer swimmer. Go over to the fishing channel and you can see that they have come in clutch time and time again over the winter to be able to continuously get that bite. Now, let's go over to the bait casting setup because this right here is not typical of a finesse style fishing setup. We, what we have is a 100 series style bait caster and it's well suited for small diameter braid. This is 10 pound test. And again, another 12 pound fluorocarbon leader. It is just the perfect size. We are using again, the uni to uni knot to connect our leader line to the main line of braid. And it's small enough to pass through our guides without uh, losing our casting distance. And we've got a small paddle tail right there a one out a one eighth ounce jig head to swim this lure again everything is all shortened down and just micro sized so that we can match the hatch that is out there in our marsh system so you got a lot of finger mullets swimming around and more often than not they're going to be around this size right here so it matches perfectly. It does not look unnatural to the fish that we are chasing after and you can make it happen. So we go over here to the rod. This is an ultralight casting rod from Old 18 Outfitters. It's the Arius 
and it's well suited for a small finesse style fishing reel. So now, now I do understand that in the US market, we don't traditionally have something that's dedicated as finesse style fishing. Like in the Japan market, they've got something called BFS, which is bait finesse system. Um, hopefully it takes a hold here in the US. For those of you that are unfamiliar with like finesse fishing, I wanna say the vast majority of our anglers here on the Texas Gulf Coast are gonna use on average like maybe 30 pound 40 pound braid for some of y'all out there watching that has never done ultralight fishing in the marsh on the like inshore style fishing on the texas gulf coast chime in with comments down below what is the average size fishing line that you're using this is again 10 pound braid what are y'all using i'm thinking like the average from what i hear some of my closest uh, viewers my subscribers what they comment on is 30 pound, 40 pound braid, and then a 20, maybe 25 pound uh, fluorocarbon or mono leader. And to me, that is big. But then again, it's just subjective to whatever it is you use. And there's no like wrong way to do it. The only way you find out, like I just can't do it. Like Mark, I cannot cast these ultra light lures, these super small, they don't have enough weight on them. It's not that they don't have enough weight. It's because the line that you're choosing to use cannot roll off of that spool because it's heavy and the lure that you're casting is too light. But whenever you downsize to 10 pound, even five pound braid, it's gonna scream off of that reel. Then you have enough weight at the end of your line to be able to just cast that lure out there. I'm not gonna say a mile long. On average, the cast that you're gonna have to learn to use or the distance that you're going to have to get is going to be anywhere from 25 to maybe like 35 yards at the most 35 and that is a very long cast the reason why you want to do that is because you've spotted the redfish and you don't want to keep going close to him spook the mullet that's right there by the boat the kayak and then those mullet in turn spook the redfish as they jet away from you you also see them, you don't want to spook a school of them, so you got to learn how to get that far cast. And that's where the light line is going to come into play. You need a reel that is capable of being able to handle such light stuff and then get it out there without backlashing. And the uh, ultra light rod, the reason why you're going to need this is because when you go to set the hook and you put all that tension on the load up, of the hook set if your rod does not bend braid does not bend and fluorocarbon is pretty stout too it's got very little bend in it or flex or give and something is going to give that's going to be either your knot or your knot right here at the hook or then just anywhere any weak point if you got a, a nick in your leader line or in your main line of the braid something is gonna give. Therefore, the ultralight rod comes in handy. Your drag is set nice and loose. A lot of y'all uh, have the common misconception that when you set the hook or when the fish is taking off, the line is too thin for an eight pound redfish and you're gonna get spooled or they're gonna drag you into the oyster or on the hook set, you'll lose too many lures. Yes, indeed, that's gonna happen if you're using big conventional gear with um, small line. And when I say conventional gear, I'm talking about the rod. A medium power rod is almost too heavy to use with this line. I'm not saying that it can't be done. I'm just simply saying that there's less give and bend in your rod. So using one of these lighter rod or like light powered rods, it's gonna allow you to have flex in it so on the hook set the rod starts to bend and at the same time because your drag isn't set down too too tight the drag will give too to accommodate for flex bend give whatever you want to uh, categorize it as and you're not going to straighten out a hook or snap your line at any weak point so all of it works in conjunction with each other to be able to successfully fight and land massive redfish on such ultralight tackle, which is what I consider finesse style gear. 
So I do believe that if you do take up the challenge and try this style of fishing, it's going to give you a newfound appreciation for not only the big guys, because when you catch a big fish, um, you already know how hard they're going to be able to pull. And there's a much better chance of them being able to get off your line or snap your line because you're on an even playing field with them. They can no longer just be winched in or muscled in really fast. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of skill on your part in playing the fish out. Now, I do have some naysayers out there that love to make the comments that you're putting undue stress on the fish. And my immediate response is, why doesn't anybody ever say that to fly fishermen? They praise them for their ability to land fish on fly rods. It's the same thing, just conventional style gear. So I'm not doing anything that's unethical. And I do make sure that I revive the fish whenever I release them and they swim away hard. But um, what I'm just simply trying to say is that you will grow a newfound appreciation for catching a big one and just admiring your own skill. And then also the little guys, you can see the fight that they have to give. And oh my gosh, catching an undersized redfish, a little rat red, is nothing short of amazing so yeah i highly recommend you check out something like this if you're interested in the gear that i am using it's going to be linked in my video description down below and uh, that is going to do it i will see y'all next time when we're off the water